Y'all, it's Chris with Rockin' 8 Farm, and today we just want to talk a little bit about some heat stress in some animals. Before we do that, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell, and go check out our website, rockin8farm.com. As many of you know, we're raising Idaho pasture pigs and some fancy chickens here in Central Texas. So we have to do a lot of work during the summer to try and keep these animals cool, try to keep these animals healthy. These Idaho pasture pigs, these guys here, they handle the heat like champs, but you know what? There's a point where hot is too hot. So one of the things that we're doing right now is we're coming out here with some frozen treats. You guys want those? You guys want those? Yeah, let me get you some, Ellie. These are some cucumbers that I got from a friend. They got a ridiculous number of cucumbers. So we threw them in the freezer, and now we've got these cucumber sickles. Come on, guys, bring them over here in the shade. So, toss out a few cucumber sickles into the shade here. Oh, guys. Just a little frozen treat in the middle of the day. This particular wallow is disgusting right now, but... I've tried doing a ton of research. I've tried asking a ton of pig people and nobody can tell me where the health concerns are for algae that is growing in a wallow. So we do what we can do to keep them maintained. Um, I start with a new wallow every year. We'll backfill this one, dig the other one a few, a few feet over. And I'll also try to do some things like come out here at night when they're already in bed and put like, um, hydrogen peroxide, or maybe even a very, very small amount of bleach. And that's one of the things that's really cool is you've got to figure a good bleach solution is like one to 10. So even if you throw like a cup of bleach in that much water, it knocks the algae way back, but you really don't have a concern. So this is another thing that we do to keep our pigs cool. We make sure that they have a nice big wallow and we try to keep them in the shade. Now, one more thing that we do is we make sure that we have these auto watering systems. It's not a bowl of water that they can just tip over. You give a pig a bowl of water during a hot summer days, they are going to tip it over and they are going to turn it into a wallow. That has just been our experience. So we've got the auto watering systems, but they're not foolproof. What we're doing right now, because we haven't had the time to dig deep trenches and run spigots, is I've got hoses running on top of the ground that are feeding these systems. But that creates its own problem because the hose water gets really, really hot. So we make sure that on every system we put this little bypass. What it allows me to do is open up the bypass, drain the hot water out of the hose, which I've already done, so I'm gonna turn this off. <clears throat> and then we can come over here to the actual nipples and clear the hot water out of the lines. And we try to do that every couple of hours so that they have cool water for at least a period of time. Another thing that we do to help keep them cool is their actual housing. As you can see, both ends are wide open. We do this to make sure that any breeze that there is can go all the way through. You'll also notice that the floors are completely dirt. So we make sure that during the summer months, we make sure there's no hay in here to create that insulation effect. They'll look, they will actually get in there and root around just a little bit to get down and get contact with cool dirt. Nobody wants you biting on the camera, young man. You'll also notice that all of my paddocks, while they have no grass, because we're in a drought, we've got lots of trees. Now, obviously trees aren't possible for everyone. It takes a long time to grow a tree, but if you don't have trees, well, maybe you need to invest in a lot more trampolines so that there's not just one covering the wallow, but they also have shady areas out on the pasture where they can lay down. Now, one of the other problems that we kind of face here on our farm is that we farrow in our barn. Um, it's just kind of the situation that works out the best for us. Here's the problem with farrowing in a barn though. If a pig wants to go lay down in the shade, they're gonna go lay down in the barn because that's where it's shady. But unless you're gonna rip all the walls out of your barn, there's not a whole lot of airflow in a barn. So we make sure all the pigs have these outdoor areas where they can come go to the bathroom. They all have wallows outdoors. They've all got fresh water, whether it's in a bowl or in an auto watering system, like you can kind of see on the edge of the barn there. But as far as actually in the barn goes, we had to make a little bit of an investment this year. That investment was making sure that every stall had its own fan to kind of keep the air flowing and moving in the barn. 
it's worked out really well for us so far. Everybody seems to be staying nice and cool. Everybody seems to be staying nice and happy. Now the last couple of things that I do to try to keep the pigs cool actually involve feed. One of the things that some of you may know is that um, I soak my pigs feed and I actually have a video about like the multitude of reasons that I soak my pigs feed. And I'm gonna post a link to that video in the upper right hand corner of the screen here. Now I recently switched to a feed that is a complete feed. It has the protein content, the mineral content, the grain content all included. So one of the reasons I soaked the pig's feed was so I could blend all of those things. I don't need to do that anymore, but I still soak my pig's feed. You can see that here's my complete feed and it's a soppy, sloggy, wet mess. So the reason I do that during the summer months and we'll probably continue to do so during the winter months, but maybe not quite as important is because when the pigs get out there and eat their feed, they're getting at least that much water. I also feed my pigs twice a day. My life would be much, much easier if I gave them their entire grain ration in the morning and called it good. But in our heat, I like the idea of feed them half of it when it's very early. Maybe the sun's not even up or at least it's still cool out. Feed them the other half in the evening. And then that way they're getting that moisture at least those two times a day. Now, that's not the only moisture they're getting. We get out here and we check this the water systems. If the water systems aren't working correctly, I stop what I'm doing and I fix them. If the water systems are hot, we drain them. So they've got access to water, but at the very minimum, they're gonna get that water from their feed twice a day. Um, in addition to that, we feed at night. So we feed soaked feed, we feed twice a day, and we feed at night. Basically, until the temperatures are actually starting to drop, which for us is about 7 p.m. 5.30 is kind of the peak of the high temp. By 7, it is a couple degrees cooler than it was at 5.30. That's when we go out and feed is at 7 o'clock at night because we know it's just going to continue to get cooler after that and that we should get down into the mid-70s shortly after the sun goes down, which is about 8.30 around here. So... Um, my thought process on feeding the animals at night, I have no scientific proof, but I know that if I eat a big bowl of pasta, my body starts processing that pasta and I get hot. I am assuming it works the same way on these mammals and I don't want them getting hot during a hot part of the day. So we feed them early in the morning when it's cool and late at night when it's starting to get cool. Now with all of that said, is there any guarantee that you're gonna be able to keep these animals alive? No, you can do everything right. Each one of these things is just hopefully reducing the percentage. So if you don't have fresh water, don't have wallows, don't have shade, don't put water in the feed, there's a 100% chance that your pig is gonna die in this heat. So all we're doing is reducing odds. Let's say uh, wallow and shade reduce their chance of death by 50%, access to water by another 10, making sure the water's cool enough that they'll drink it because it's, if, there's, if it's too, too hot, they might not, another 10 checking on them regularly, another 10, you know, you're just trying to reduce that risk of losing an animal to heat. With that said, you can reduce the chances of your animals dying of some sort of heat exhaustion as much as possible and do everything in your power, and you can still lose an animal to heat. It happens. Sometimes these animals are just goofballs. Maybe they're not quite feeling well, but they're still acting relatively normal, but you don't notice that they're not drinking. Um, my friends at Green Thicket Farm just recently had a loss on their farm. I'm actually going to post a link to that video up here. Do me a favor and subscribe to that channel, channel and click his notification bell as well. He's doing awesome things with pigs. I consider him kind of a mentor. His name is Caleb. So go check them out. But they just had a loss on their farm. And you really can't describe the loss as anything other than horny boar syndrome. They had a boar that was much more interested in his ladies than he was in water and shade and wallows and cooling off. At least that's what we're thinking happened and you don't have a ton of control over that. If the farm is your job or you work from home, well now you got a little bit more control because you can actually say, well, I'm gonna take my day to chase this pig around with a hose and keep him cool and make sure he drinks. But that's kind of unrealistic. To some extent, these animals have to survive at least partially on their own. So this is by no means the end all be all. This is kind of what we're doing here around our farm to keep our pigs cool and happy and healthy. Um, you know, again, shade, wallow, water, frozen treats, uh, soaked feed, uh, feeding at cooler parts of the day. That's what we are capable of doing here on our farm. If you live in a hot area and those are some things, some of those are things that you're not doing, well, maybe you can adapt a couple of those to your program and I hope that it helps. 
But until I see y'all again, this has been Chris with Rockin' 8 Farm, and I want every single one of you to be happy and live healthy.